Hello everyone and welcome back to Soul Stained Ink. I'm sorry it's so dark in here, but my name is Beth and I'm too lazy to get up and turn on the overhead light. So we're just going to go with this. Today I am doing a try a chapter tag. I finished two books out of the four or five I was working on. So I decided to choose another one, throw it into the mix have a lot of different things going on, bobble them around. It's kind of fun, but I couldn't decide which one. So I, instead of the normal, typical three, I have six for us to chat about today. So as I said, this is the try chapter tag, which means I will be reading the first chapter of each book and talking to you a little bit about how I feel about that particular book and then picking the one that stands out the most to me. I'm going to start out with Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Alinder. Now, I know basically nothing about this book. I've read the summary a couple of times, but honestly, I picked it up because several of the girls at school were reading it a couple of years ago, and I like to keep up with what my students are reading, but I also picked up a whole bunch of other books because there was a Scholastic Book Fair, and you know how that goes. So I just never quite got around to it. But basically, I think it is some sort of possession ghost story of some incarnation. So anyway, I'm going to go off, read the first chapter, and let you know what I think. All right, I am back from reading the first chapter of Bad Girls Don't Die by Katie Alinder. Uh, basically, the first chapter is just an introduction to the main characters, so there's not really much to talk about except that the main character, whose name I think is Alexis, uh, she is a photographer, and they've snuck out in the middle of the night. Her little sister followed her. She snuck out to take pictures of the house in the middle of the night, and there's an odd glowing light that they witness coming from near the house, but not in the house and that's kind of where chapter one leaves off so it's interesting but I'm already kind of starting to forget about it so let's move on to the world's greatest detective by Caroline Carlson this was in the May uh, detectives box from Al Crate Jr. and I'm excited to get into it it's about two 12 year olds I believe who want to be detectives so we'll see Okay, I am back from reading chapter one of The World's Greatest Detective. We have met Toby, who is an orphan who is sent to live with his uncle, who is a detective on Detectives Row. And basically, there are too many detectives and not enough work, so they're struggling. And there's a really hilarious scene with a woman who has come in, and this 11-year-old boy is a detective's assistant. So she's trying to get him to deduce everything that happened to her because she reads this magazine called Sphinx, which is all detective stories because everybody loves a good detective story. And it was just, it was funny and kind of dry humor. And I can tell that I'm really going to enjoy this book. But for now, I'm going to set it aside and pick up the Serpent King by Jeff Zentner. Let me read the first chapter of this. I'll be back to talk to you about it in just a second. Okay, I'm not sure what I was expecting from this because I've heard a lot about it back when it first came out. I think I may have read the first chapter before, but it didn't feel familiar to me. And it wasn't what I was expecting. The writing is solid for what it is, but Definitely not the book that I'm in the mood for at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this one is out, but I will be reading it at some point when I'm in a different mood. All right, the next book is The Voyage of the Basilisk, a memoir by Lady Trent, which is by Marie Brennan. This is book three, three, three uh, in the memoirs of Lady Trent series, the first one being A Natural History of Dragons, and the second one being on my shelf over there, 
the Tropic of Serpents. I enjoyed them both very much. And I'm looking forward to this one. So I'll be back in just a minute. I'm not even sure why I bothered to put this in because I knew I was going to love it. I love all of the other two, all of the other two, the other two that I've read. I love the style of writing. I love all of the characters and I want to dive back into the world. This is a definite contender, although I may want to wait until I've completed the other three books that I'm working on so that I can really concentrate on Lady Trent once more but definitely, definitely high up there in the ranks. I love these books. So next we have one that will shock you all. That is Library of Souls. This is the third novel in the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series by Ransom Riggs. I read the first two, loved the first one. The second one left a bad taste in my mouth, just was not into it. So I never picked up the third one been sitting on my shelf since it came out. So I'll read chapter one and get back to you. Okay, I know you guys love the Peregrine series. Um, I really enjoyed the first book. The second book, like I said, not so much. I think maybe I need to reread the first two before I read this. It's been over a year since reading the second book and well, maybe since reading both of them obviously since reading both of them anyway I didn't even read the entire first chapter I read the first page and a half and put it down so that's that's not going to be read right now the final final book I have to try a chapter on today is Thornjack it is a night and nothing novel by Katherine Harbour the back says, in the beginning was nothing, from nothing emerged night, then came the children of nothing and night. So I am intrigued. This was a complete and total cover buy uh, at Dollar General. They had it on sale for a dollar, and I said, I'll try it. So now I'm actually going to try it and read the first chapter and let you know what I think. Having decided not to read the summary before I dove into reading the prologue, I can honestly say that I still have no earthly idea what Thornjack is all about. However, I read the prologue and it is beautiful and haunting and makes me want to read more. So the biggest contenders right now are The World's Greatest Detective, Voyage of the Basilisk, and Thornjack. As much as I enjoyed Chapter 1 of The World's Greatest Detective, I think I need something with a little bit more movement to it than this is displaying so far. So I'm going to go ahead and set that down to be the next thing I pick up. And now we're in between Voyage of the Basilisk and Thornjack. I think I'm actually going to keep both of these out and kind of read a little bit more of each of them to see which one I want to continue on with. So I'm choosing both because I can't ever just choose one, right? You can't, once you pop, you can't stop. You gotta have a bunch of books. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've read any of the books I mentioned, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I expect several of you to get on to me about the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children's book. It's all right. Let out your anger and frustration at my idi idiocy down below. If you liked the video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, and I will talk to you guys again soon. Until next time, I hope that you read something good and write something even better. Bye.